Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to move on now to the moment that many of you have been waiting for. I think many of you were waiting for, for uh, Mayor Booker, but now that that's passed, the second uh, best thing in the world is Dirk Olin uh, and the list of the 100 best corporate citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, help me to welcome the editor-in-chief of Corporate Responsibility Magazine, my good friend and yours, Dirk Olin. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, um, nice act to follow. <laughs> I, uh, I benefit from the fact that I am not, uh, that, that while I am not Ryan Seacrest, I do nevertheless have, uh, have some goods that some of you are somewhat interested in, so I believe. Um, I want to start by thanking, uh, however, uh, uh, Duncan Niederauer and Michelle Green for hosting us. Uh, likewise, uh, for Senator, Bo uh, excuse me, Mayor Booker, uh, for inspiring us, and uh, John V. Meyer for his uh, his crucial insights uh, as chairman of KPMG. Also, my good friend Mike Wallace and our partners at GRI, who, however long-winded, are of invaluable and inestimable service to all of us. And and specifically, had I been on the stage with Mr. Niederauer and Mr. V. Meyer, I would have uh, gainsayed their opposition to reporting for Square because uh, while I understand the emotional uh, vector from where they're proceeding, uh, it is nevertheless, in my opinion, of absolutely uh, incalculable importance that we become better at reporting, certainly, more efficient at reporting, certainly, less onerous about it, certainly, but that we do it because absent transparency, you will not achieve responsibility personal opinion. Now, apropos of that, scholars of evolution, you may wonder where I'm going with this, describe a phenomenon known, some of you may know about this, as the peacock effect. And this happens when the typically rational process of natural selection goes haywire. So uh, for millennia, peahens uh, preferred males with flashy tails. Uh, this was sort of a proxy for whether they were going to be able to provide for the family. And uh, the problem was that they prized that so much and for so long that the males became really the equivalent of muscle bound or tail bound. Their tails got so big and heavy and flashy that they became easy prey for predators. And that became, uh, posed an existential threat actually to the species for a while except for some accidents that are sort of too detailed to go into. So why do I bring this up? Well, I bring this up because, in my opinion, people who design corporate responsibility programs or compensation systems, healthcare systems, there's a load of analogies, but that they uh, know about the peacock effect from personal experience. So you've got a bonus schedule that suddenly diverges from the organization's true mission, and uh, you, know, you end up with this disconnection between what you were trying to achieve and what you're actually achieving. And I think a lot of us know this. There's been some interesting literature written on this over the years, Stephen Kerr's famous piece on the folly of rewarding A while hoping for B. So, this may be analogous to where we've come with capitalism at this point, with its uh, perhaps muscle-bound over-dependence on the bottom line, the single bottom line. And I'm not saying that margins are not important. In fact, without healthy profits, organizations would not survive to propagate, to keep with our evolution metaphor. In fact, we include financial management on the 100 best corporate citizens list precisely for this reason. And don't get me wrong, we take some grief about this from the NGO community. But again, it's my opinion, if you don't have profits, you're not gonna be around next year to be corporately responsible. Now, we also include governance, employee relations, environment, workforce engagement, risk and compliance, philanthropy, those are all important. But the point is that the blind pursuit of margins can become that heavy tail. And uh, it's really a vestige of the Industrial Revolution. It made sense to a certain extent then in terms of measurement. Uh, but I would argue that when that gets out of whack, it displaces more sustainable systems of motivation and reward. Speaking of which, sustainable system of motivation and reward. That's what leads us to the 14th annual 100 best corporate citizens list. So, without further ado, <laughs> there may be some more ado after all. I'd like to start with the uh, list from 100 to 21. Well, 
So beginning there, we see, uh, and there's some folks uh, represented in this room, and I hasten to add that while everybody wants to get to that pinnacle, to the top 20, top 10, to be on this list means that by definition you haven't had an extraordinary year in terms of historical capitalist evolution. So um, you'll see Hershey up there. Uh, uh, that's the first time they've been up there since we've uh, been keeping track. Um, you'll see AMD. Is Tom Moen here? Tim, I mean? I thought Tim was coming. Uh, that's their fourth appearance in the last five years. Um, Hess Corporation is up there. Mikhail? I saw her earlier. There she is, crouching down. She should be standing up. Mikhail Pel Pelting. Uh, the Entergy Corporation, they've been on the list for uh, five of the last six years. Patty, are you here? I'm striking out. Um, CA Technologies, I know Erica joined us. Late. Stand up, Erica. Take a bow for CA Technologies. Uh, Northeast Utilities has on, been on the list for three of the last four years. Jones Lang LaSalle. Um, is Seth Weinert with us? No, he was coming. Seth? Um, Monsanto. We had Glenn. They're great. Um, Praxair. Um, is Tamara with us? Praxair uh, is also first year since we've kept track and they, uh, they have moved uh, all the way up, as you'll see, to number 25. So there's your top 100 through 21. Very exciting, but now the air is gonna start to get a little thinner. And here's your top 20 through 11. We've got uh, McGraw-Hill up there for the fourth year running. We've got uh, Johnson Johnson with a big bump. They were uh, 36th uh, in 2012. Um, and uh, so they, they, have, uh, they have moved up to 17th, and that's their fourth year running on the list. Uh, DuPont is up there. Camille spoke for, us, uh, spoke for her table earlier. That's their fourth year running. Um, and Spectra Energy on the list for the last three years running. IBM, we already uh, had a shout out to Reg Foster for his leadership on our methodology committee. And believe me, sitting through those methodology committee meetings, that is a slog. It's really important work in the same way that all this reporting is. But when you hear about the kinds of things that, uh, that uh, the different reporters have to deal with, there is enormous survey fatigue out there. We recognize that, but we consider it vitally important. And so now, if I may, I would like to move us toward the top 10 and number 10, Coca-Cola Enterprises Incorporated. Join me. Number nine, Campbell Soup Company. Likewise, a perennial. And uh, Nikki, Nikki's here, aren't you? There she is, Sorry. Nikki Kelly. Number eight, Merck. Number seven, and I'm hearing the collective inhalations. Hasbro, I don't think Amy's with us today. I don't think Amy's with us, no, I didn't think so. She wasn't able to make it. Number six, Gap. And now, folks, we are into the top five. And number five, Suzanne, take a bow. Number four. Eaton. That represents a big jump. If, if memory serves, they were 16th or 17th last year, and Gary uh, Clausen would have uh, joined us, but he was one of the victims of uh, some of the plane mishaps that some of you may have dealt with, uh, so he was not able to join us. Now to the top three. BMS. Robert, I think Robert joined us. There he is. Take a bow, Robert. You deserve it. Top three. 
Number two, Mattel. I don't think we have it. And with that, the number one corporate citizen for 2013, AT&T. John is John Schultz and Beth. Congratulations. Please stay right there. And in fact, uh, with that, that closes out the top 100 list. Beth has joined me, and I would like one representative from each of any of the top 20 who is with us to join me up here. We're going to take a picture, and then you guys get to go have a little fun on the stock exchange floor. Thanks very much.